further ado here, let's talk single versus dual fan coolers, and more importantly, which one performs better. First, we should start with the why for dual fan coolers, or at least the supposed why. I've heard arguments for having two fans on a cooler, like you get more performance from running two fans slower compared to one fan faster, which hints at each case producing a similar amount of noise which without any data to hand, it's hard to tell if that makes sense. It feels unintuitive. But an easier argument for two fans sounds like your CPU will run much cooler with two fans, which seems to make sense. More airflow is more better, right? The flip side on that argument is that two fans cost more than one and how much more air is being moved through the cooler by two fans compared to one. Well, that's what we want to figure out now. So, a while back, I reviewed the Noctua NH-U9S and its Chromax cousin, twice removed. And I also did a video trying to understand whether black painted coolers perform better or worse than unpainted coolers. This gave me the perfect opportunity to test the dual versus single fan cooler situation out, since the U9S comes with extra fan clips, providing an opportunity to add a second fan. But it doesn't come with a second, this is a U9, uh, uh, D9L, by the way. I don't know where the other one is. Anyway, it doesn't come with a second fan, but luckily for me, and I'm really trying to see the bright side of this, so please go with me on this, I accidentally sat on my beloved NHD9L after I left it on my chair during a CPU cooler swap, which swiftly enacted the no PC components on chairs rule. Since the D9L was my smaller test cooler, it needed replacing, which encouraged me to get the U9S, and here we are. So the 92mm fan that came with the D9L has been ripped off from its corpse and donated to the U9S for today's testing. Today being quite a while back, but there we go. Both fans have the same base specification and to all intents and purposes, they seem to be running as expected. So how does the testing show the performance? Well, the acoustically limited testing with the 55 watt average load of the Firestrike combined test shows us compared to the single fan NH-U9S, the dual fan U9S is just over one degree cooler, which is, as far as I'm concerned is outside of testing tolerance and can be considered very slightly cooler in this test. But we can't take one set of results as read. By the way, it's uh, three runs for every test. So take it three runs, but it's it's one test. Anyway, turning up the heat to an average load of 100 watts, Prime T5 expands the gap to 3.5 degrees, which isn't a surprise since we'd expect to see more differences as we get closer to the, towards the extremes. In both of those tests, the sound output of the coolers was hitting 36.5 dBA, and it's really interesting to see why the dual fan cooler was performing noticeably better. To create the same noise output of the single fan, the two fans only had to reduce in speed by 7%, or about 185 RPM. So you're losing 7% of your fan speed, but gain the advantage of the airflow maintaining, you know, maintained throughout the cooler. And the additional fan is potentially counteracting a fair amount of the turbulence that's caused by the first fan and the friction caused by the fins of the tower. That answers the do two fans perform better than at the same noise level theory, two fans are better than one by a few degrees or so in certain circumstances, at least in this instance. But what about at full speed performance? Well, predictably, the dual fan cooler does perform better here. The 1.2 degree difference in the acoustically limited testing with Firestrike has now increased to 2.6 degrees at full fan speed. And for Priority 5, the gap has actually decreased from 3.5 degrees in the acoustically limited testing to 2.9 degrees at full fan speed. Why the reduced difference? Who knows? I didn't find anything out of the ordinary with the rest of the system, and it doesn't make sense for diminishing returns to apply here considering the other, resu other results. I don't know. If you have any theory behind why the result could occur, let me know in the comments. In terms of noise levels and fan speeds, you get a little more noise with the dual fan setup, but you lose off the top speed of the fans. I did a little messing around after with the speed of the fans individually, and looks like if the rear fan, fan 2 in this instance, is running at full speed, it reduces the top speed of the front fan 
fan one. But if we turn the rear, f uh, rear fan to full speed and then turn off the front fan, the rear fan doesn't change speed. Perhaps the slight difference in fan speed or lack of synchronization is causing some sort of resistance or back pressure for the front fan, preventing it from hitting top speed. Anyway, last thing to cover is the cost situation. If you bought the U9S by itself, you're looking at about $60 pounds or euros, but getting another fan will push the cost up to around $75 pounds or euros. If we take these figures and mash them together with the Acoustic Limited Fire Strike test results, the normalized ones, the value of the dual fan cooler isn't looking very good. But then again, I don't think anyone was expecting anything else. To summarize all of this, yes, two fans are better than one, but best case, at least for this 125 millimeter tall cooler with 92 millimeter fans, you're looking at a maximum difference of just under four degrees with a 100 watt load, around 70% fan speed, and even less ramping the, speed fan, the fan speed higher or the load lower. Going by price versus performance graph, it's certainly not worth it, but there are some edge cases where it might be worth it to you. For instance, it can look pretty cool. Redundancy isn't a bad thing, or maybe maximum performance potential at all times is paramount for you. Whatever your reason, if you're considering more fans, dual fan coolers like the Arctic Freezer 3040 Force Duo that I've previously reviewed, please consider using the Amazon associate links in the video description. To get them. If you want, you can use those links at any time to purchase stuff on Amazon and a small commission will head my way. It's super helpful for me and doesn't cost you any more than you're already spending on Amazon. So with that said, a huge thanks to anyone who uses those links and an even bigger thanks to my patrons on Patreon who are scrolling on the screen now, I think that side. Click on the Patreon button on the screen now and head over there if you want to support me directly. Otherwise, a like, comment, and sharing the video goes a long way to helping grow the channel. So thanks for the support, thanks for checking this video out, and I'll catch you in the next one.